In today's video, I got some more information for you guys about the upcoming update on Elite Levels and Card Evolution, and towards the end of the video, I might show you guys some gameplay too of the upcoming Card Evolutions, but let's get right into it. This is a blog post that the official Clash Royale page posted a couple days ago, and I'll show you some more recent posts too from a day or less ago, but let's get right into it. Upgrading to Elite Levels will not follow the same upgrade path as Levels 1 to 14, which requires gold and cards. To get Elite Level, you need Elite Wild cards. You get this new magic item from extra copies of your level 14 cards. All upgrades from level 14 to 15 will require 50,000 elite wild cards, no gold. That sounds like a lot. It is a lot. Elite level is not something we expect to every, everyone to unlock right away. And it's also the reason why we have locked no extra content behind level 15 card evolution. Getting to elite level has been designed to be a more passive experience for players and something that will take time rather than resources to earn. So it's going to take a while for you to upgrade these cards to the elite levels. The more cards you have at level 14, the more elite wild cards you will earn. So 50,000 won't seem so daunting as you continue to level up your entire collection. Why the change to upgrading cards? When we originally announced level 15 in February, we fully intended to make it cost gold in cards the way that every other level works. We saw such a vocal response against adding a new level, mainly due to the amount of gold it would take to level up cards to max levels. So we went back to the drawing board and settled on this new, more passive level up method. It's a slower, but no longer requires getting lucky with card progress or saving up huge amount of gold. Don't want to wait. Elite levels have been designed to be a more passive progression, similar to Masteries. If you want to use magic items to level up your cards to elite level, you can. However, they're used more effectively to get your cards to level 14. Sitting on a lot of gold, you can buy cards in the shop that you already have at level 14 to get elite wild cards. And then this is the card conversion rate you see here. So level 14 cards, extra copies. A common card is going to be equal to two elite wild cards. A rare card is equal to 10 elite wild cards. An epic card, 50 elite wild cards. A legendary, 200. And a champion card gives you a whopping 500 elite wild cards. And then here Here's the magic items conversion rate. So a common wild card is going to be equal to two elite wild cards. A rare is going to be equal to 10, an epic 50, a legendary 200, a champion wild card 500, and then a book of cards. Any rarity gives you 5,000, which sounds like a pretty insane number. Now, the cap for the elite wild cards is going to be 400,000, and then those are the conversion rates that I just said. So that blog post I just read, guys, was a summary of how elite wild cards are going to work. Now let's get into the card evolution and in-depth analysis of what that looks like and how you go about using them and unlocking them. So one of the most important features in the upcoming update is card evolution. It's going to completely change the way Clash Royale is played. I'm sure you guys have seen the gameplay. You guys will know that. It's going to completely change the game, probably even more than champions because they look super broken. As you guys know, the evolved cards coming out are Barbarian, Skeletons, Firecracker, and Royal Giant, and every season a new evolution will be released. So this is just a basic breakdown of what card evolutions are. This new mechanic allows some cards in your deck to evolve during a battle. To evolve a card, you'll have to use it several times during a battle. The amount of deployments needed to trigger an evolution will change for each card. For example, the barbarians that are being evolved need to be used twice to evolve. Once the ev evolved card is used, it goes back to its normal form, so it'll be alternating between forms during each battle. So here's an example with the barbarians being evolved. You can see right here, you have the regular barbarians in hand, you deploy them, and then they end up being evolved, and then you deploy the evolved ones, and then they go back to regular. And you unlock the evolution slot once you reach king level 7. So that's good, you don't need to be too high of a king level to get it. The slot will be the first position of your deck, and it's where you need to place the card where you'll need to place the card that you want to involve. So right here, as you can see, you have the evolution slot that the Barbarian is placed into, which is where you need to place it for it to be active, whereas the inactive one is the Firecracker, which is also getting evolution because it's not in the slot. And it says here that any of the other seven card slots will not have the active evolution in battles. And now you guys are probably wondering, well, how do you unlock the evolutions? And you do so through evolution shards. So to unlock each evolution, you need to collect six evolution shards. shards Cards are specific for each card. So for example, you need six of the Barbarian shards to unlock the Evolved Barbarians. So once you collect six of the Barbarian shards, you get the Evolved Barbarians that you can use in battle. But there's also Wild shards, and these are converted into shards of any card, and the rarity doesn't matter. Luckily though, the shards can be found in a variety of places. They're in the Season Shop, Special Challenges, Pass Royale, Shop Offer, Path of Legends, and Level Up Chests. And if you already unlocked an evolution, additional shards are converted into cards depending on the rarity that 
influences what the conversion amount will be. So for example, if it's a common, the overflow cards is a thousand overflow gold, 5,000 rare 250, and then it goes to 12,500 and then so on and so forth. And as for what game modes the card evolutions can be used in, it can be used in majority except classic challenges, grand challenges, and draft modes. I don't know why they can't be used in classic or grand challenges. I honestly would like if they were able to be used in that. So I wonder if they'll change that. And this is where dark elixir comes into play a little bit. So as I said before, each card needs a number of cycles to evolve and you'll track this with the dark elixir diamonds that are displayed after the cards are deployed. So as you can see here, it's the cycle and it's tracked with the dark elixir. That's kind of the dark elixir they were hinting that was coming to the game. So I guess this is the role that the dark elixir serves inside of the card evolution. And this is a quick breakdown of the elite wild cards you can get per season. And you can actually get quite a lot for free. As you can see, you can get 103 thousand for free per season and then this is what you get from the premium meaning stuff that you pay for whether it's the pass or the global tournament rewards that's only thirty four thousand in comparison to 103,000 for free so as you can see this does seem to be pretty free to play friendly you can get a lot 103,000 without having to spend any money now guys with that information out of the way let's get into the gameplay of some of these evolved cards and some are just insanely broken this is the royal giant one so basically it explodes in a radius near him it drops its bomb so it just completely annihilated that skeleton army it pushes back the barbarians doesn't deal enough damage to kill them but it pushes them back so it basically stays invincible it also knocks back the hunter not able to knock it back anymore but it knocked it out of range and one evolved rg took a whole tower killed the skeleton army pushed back barbarians and hunter between the skeletons and the royal giant evolution i don't know which one is more broken but the skeletons essentially multiply so when they attack something they multiply i mean look at this they basically took the whole tower right here and and like i mean they keep multiplying i mean they're on the king tower and they basically don't die unless you log or zap them and like look at them just attacking the golem i mean the golemite's finally going to explode and take them out but this is insanely broken. The Firecracker and the Barbarians look good evolved, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're anywhere near as broken as the Skeletons and the RG looked. The Evolved Barbarians, as you'll see, just deal more damage and have more health. I don't think they're going to be too out of hand compared to the other ones. So here's the actual stat change for the Barbarians. Speed boost per hit plus 50%, movement speed 50% plus... Hit speed plus 50% damage, 9% increase, and hit points 30% increase. So this is still broken, but like I said, compared to the Royal Giant one and the Skeleton one, it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. I just hope Supercell is going to balance these. I think they're definitely going to need immediate nerfs or even toned down before they come out, especially the Royal Giant and the Skeletons. I mean, those look scary, but let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe. Thanks again. Until next time.